So while the rest of the media is focused on Chinese weather balloons, uh, we're going to stay laser focused on the greatest environmental terrorist attack in world history of all time, by the way. A, pro a specifically carried out terrorist attack, an eco-terrorist attack of all time. That is the Biden administration blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline and its direct connection to World War III, which is unfolding before our eyes. We now have an even greater amount of evidence of exactly why President Biden and the, the overall deep state blew up the pipeline. Now Seymour Hersh speaking out in his first interview, first few interviews now, um, since his bombshell report, the legendary reporter, of course, who broke this story. We're going to get to that in a minute. We'll tell you what Cy Hirsch has to say about the Biden, the, the Biden administration's motivations for all of this. But we now have some brave senators and members of Congress saying that this Nord Stream pipeline explosion could be an impeachable offense. And energy experts saying Europe could be thrown into an energy crisis like we've never seen before, because the real story is not this winter, 2022 into 2023. No, the real story is the winter of 2023 into 2024. And we've been saying that for months on this show, that it's not about because the reserves may still exist when you run out and you can't afford them. There are none. And Russia does not send any more to you. We are screwed. And that's exactly what's unfolding uh, as the supplies could be completely gone. But first, the growing concerns of a global war that we want to talk about, the West and its allies against Russia and China. So as Zero Hedge points out this morning, a global war is on our doorstep. A 2022 survey of risk experts at the insurance company a AXA and other larger firms paints a pessimistic picture of where the current geopolitical situation could be leading us. Russia's war on Ukraine has raised profound questions about how states interact, eroding norms of international conduct that underpin successful responses to a variety of global risks. And that was just a recent survey. Now, major indicators that battle lines are being drawn economically and mostly around precious minerals and around energy resources, of course. This week, though, Japan announced that it's now going to build up a massive military. Of course, we got these indications at the end of the year, but now the purchase of Tomahawk weapons, et cetera, from the United States is large. Pacifist Japan unveils unprecedented $320 billion military buildup. Unthinkable, it says, under past administrations. The rapid arming of Japan has the support of 70% of its voters? Sounds like propaganda to me. 70%? of Japanese want their country to massively militarize? Okay. And it's illegal, by the way, because the United States said no to both Japan and Germany building up a massive military. Well, that went out the window. First, Germany announced a massive buildup on its own. Now Japan. Japan and Germany are ordering billions of dollars in weapons from the United States. Don't you love how this works, by the way? Like, we tell you, you can't build up your military. And then once we sort of step back and say, why don't you guys go ahead and build up your military? And oh, by the way, we know where you can get these weapons. Just give us a call. We'd be happy to pay for it. We'd be happy to supply them. You pay for them. It's good to have friends that buy all of your crap. And that's exactly what Japan is doing with buying tomahawks and others. Japan's constitution specifically that the United States wrote... The United States sat in and basically helped craft J the Japanese constitution after World War II. And it doesn't even recognize a standing military. So the constitution of Japan does not even recognize them having a military. <laughs> it's been thrown out the window. That whole plan has been thrown out the window. So now Japan just became the third largest military spender behind the United States and China. It's amazing how that happens overnight. We don't have a military, and then tomorrow we have the third largest in terms of spending. We'll see how large they actually get because, you know, Japan has an aging population. So where are they going to get all of these young soldiers to be a part of it? Or do they really care because it's an island nation, so we don't really need soldiers as much as we need massive amounts of weapons. So what you're saying is currently they are the third largest but the worst trained. <laughs> Yeah, or worse, or, you know, 
world's largest, but maybe not even have like the actual manpower, like the human beings right, exactly. as like an, like an infantry, you know, in terms of soldiers, boots on the ground, infantry training. Uh, of course, the United States is helping with all of this training and they, I mean, we've what, been there. It just, it just blows my mind. Like what's, what's the end game for all of like all of these countries getting involved in all these wars. They're all having like the U S is having problems with, with, young people like there were we have an aging population japan has an aging population what are we going to do with our young people we're going to go send them out to die yeah yeah like that that is not helping the situation I, and you see how this is all coming together right i mean you have japan building up a massive military you have you have all of these countries now for a part of the nato alliance western alliance building up and militarizing you have you know germany militarizing you have um uh, you have france ramping up as well so we know what's coming like all of these things are laying, being laid out for a reason. But, you know, this is a really awful reason. The people that fought in World War II think that this is a terrible idea. The people that fought at the Battle of Okinawa, for instance, uh, think that this is a huge mistake. And maybe they know. Maybe they have some idea of what this carnage would look like. <laughs> this is a bad idea. So this 70% number sounds really fishy to me. Like 70% of Japanese want to do that. Okay. They probably know a thing or two about this. So the people who have fought in the Battle of Okinawa have an idea about this. Australia. Is this, is this basically like Cuba, where the United States is in there like doing propaganda to their own people? You know? Uh, yeah, I don't know about the propaganda piece of this. And maybe anyone watching us from Japan can let us know, like what sort of American military propaganda or... You know, you might not see it as American military propaganda. It probably is, you know, Japanese propaganda that's fomented and created by the U.S. by the U.S. to help you with this. Um, I, I'd be interesting to know any any viewers from Japan. Like, what do you guys see in terms of this? Uh, are you are you being fed this on your newscasts that you should be scared? You should be scared of China. Uh, that's what we want you to believe, and so too is Australia. So this is amazing. Australia is now amassing a large military in preparation of going to war with China. Sky News last night. This is unbelievable. Sky News in Australia. Take a look at your screens here. Just released a report reminding all Australians why they should militarize against China. A war with China is coming, they say. Watch. You believe it will be inevitable that there will be forced conflict? We've got a significantly increased defence. A once-in-a-generation look at whether our ADF is fit for purpose. The United States will go to war if necessary in order to protect Taiwan. Of course, we have alliance obligations. What we don't have is strike capabilities. The Chinese PLA has 975,000 troops. How long, realistically, could you hold them off? We will fight as long as it takes. Victory is anything but assured. Are we ready for war? We are acting as quickly as we can. I pray that they will get it right. <sighs> Look yeah. at those Chinese missiles aimed right there. Yeah. Unbelievable. I, I love the scary music, the scary music and everything. I mean, that was... That was well, that's like a movie trailer. Really designed... Yeah. Yeah, that was designed for I kept for waiting for Gerard Butler to show up. <laughs> Gerard Butler. Yeah. I mean, get ready, Australia. And I mean, this was a produced documentary from Sky News. You're going to be, you know, Australia will be used as a staging ground, just like Japan will be used as a staging ground for a war with China. We're surrounding well, China. Well, look at the... And look at the clips that, that we don't even know. Like they could have been taken out of context of of the you know Chinese people saying whatever that was they were saying. Like we we will stand our ground or whatever. Like where did that come from? Like there's no context around what they were saying. So no. they, they could be just pulling clips from anywhere. I mean, you you really have to dive deep and watch this hour long documentary, you know, to really see the propaganda. As Caitlin Johnstone reports yesterday in Australia during a session of the Senate, this is amazing. Senators wanted to know, hey, here in Australia, a small question. We just got a small question. Mind if I ask my little small question here? Are Americans putting nuclear warheads here in Australia? I'm a senator. I'd like to know if there's Americans putting nuclear warheads here in Australia using us as a staging ground. Seems like a legitimate question. To which the condescending foreign minister, Penny Wong, said, hey, 
The Americans have a policy of not telling us if they have nuclear weapons based in our own country of Australia. They have a don't ask, don't tell policy. And we should just go along with how America has their don't ask, don't tell policy. This is just one of the most astonishing pieces of video I think I've ever seen. Watch this. Understood by the United States. No, I understood that. Thank you, Minister. Um, so, Mr. Moriarty, do I understand it from that answer that defence doesn't believe that there is a restraint <laughs> under Australia's current treaty obligations to Australia permitting nuclear armed B 52 bombers? to be present in Australia, um, provided it's not a permanent presence. Is that, is that, that no, what the I'm statement, trying to understand? Um, you're reading your more in, the statement says there is no impediment under this treaty or the NPT to the visit of foreign aircraft to Australian airfields or transit in Australian airspace. Yes, but the critical question here, Minister, is whether or not they carry nuclear weapons. Well, and the critical, and that, the, that the, was, the, the, the responsible way of handling this I, is to recognise that the US has a neither confirm nor deny uh, position, uh, which we understand and respect. So, uh, you know, we, we are not. I know you want to make a political point. No, I don't want to we make are, that. Yes, just you want to answer. Do. Yes, you do. But we no, are no, not. No, I really just no, want well, to answer. Let me yeah, finish, no. please. Please let the minister finish. We, we are not in a position to go further than yeah. what Mr. Moriarty has just gone. Now that puts us at a disadvantage because then you can get into a whole range of our hypotheticals, which you are doing. I don't actually think it's particularly responsible or fair uh, to the Australian <laughs> community because I think you would be sensible enough to understand what Mr. Moriarty is saying. So just shut up. Don't ask any questions. America is using. Australia as a launching pad for its coming war with China, and they've got nuclear weapons here in our own backyard, but how condescending of you to ask a question like that. Which, which makes them a legitimate legal nuclear target in the, in the event of nuclear war. Yeah. To which they have to rely on us to respond. I mean, exactly. That's, that's nice of us. Yeah, we're there to, we're there to help in you know, any way that we can, so that's what friends do. And by I mean, the way, maybe that's all that was happening in Cuba, too. You know, like when they had the missile crisis there, maybe that's all they were doing. They just wanted to have them there just in case, you know, and, and don't ask questions like yeah, we're just we didn't using ask it any as questions, right? We didn't ask it didn't any questions us. at all. Yeah. So, you know, and, and she says it's really irresponsible for the Australian people. Oh, oh, him asking a question about that is 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 uh, is insensitive to the Australian people. Just be blue pilled. Just ignore it. Don't take a red pill. Just keep being blue pilled, Australia, and just totally ignore it. And today, we've gotten some greater evidence of exactly why President Biden and the deep state destroyed the Nord Stream pipeline. Seymour Hirsch finally did a deeper dive interview upon his original reporting on his Substack, which proved that the U.S. carried out the Nord Stream attack, planned at the deep state level using U.S. Navy divers trained at a near CIA facility in Florida to go and carry out this attack. Why did President Biden blow up the Nord Stream pipeline? Driving Germany into chaos and most of Europe into chaos. Now they're buying our natural gas for five times the price. It's a brilliant move, isn't it? Take away their cheap energy. So here's what Seymour Hirsch had to say about the motivation for the Biden administration. Watch. Here's what Biden did, and this is what I think the ultimate point of the story, and why so many people, even the intelligence community, are very troubled by it. What he did is he said, I'm in a big war with Ukraine. It's not looking good. Uh, I want to be sure I get German and West, West European support, and I know winter's coming, and if it's going to be bad, I don't want the Germans to say, we got to check out because we're, gonna, we're get, getting massacred, we'll be massacred with no, no, no cheap fuel. And um, our, our economy will go bonkers. We're going to check out and we're going to open up the gas line, which they could do. So he took away that option. So keep Germany and Europe in the war against Ukraine or in Ukraine against Russia by blowing up their source of natural gas because Europe has no natural resources to speak of. They don't they can't they have to either get it from Russia. They have to get it from the United States. They have to get it from, they don't have any oil, right? Or natural gas. They have to get it from us or Russia. So by taking away that leverage, now you're forcing them to be on our side. 
you're basically saying, hey, you're going to get natural gas from us. You'll pay five times as much. You need to stay in this fight. Don't you dare think about like backing off, staying out of Ukraine against Russia. We need you in this. That was the motivation. That's the motivation to keep them in this. Um, this he also says this could be the end of NATO. Seymour Hirsch does. Now, that is very similar to what Colonel Douglas McGregor has said on our show about the death of NATO on the horizon. Because think about it, right? The idea of NATO is, it, first of all, it's a defensive organization. That's, that's what they say. Number two, it's meant to keep, I got your back, right? Like, I've got your back. I'm going to protect my friend. I'm going to protect my, uh, my allies. That's the idea. So instead, we destroyed NATO and dest because of destroying the Nord Stream pipeline. Because now what we're saying is, we don't have your back, allies. We're literally going to take away your way of life, destroy your energy infrastructure. That's, not, that's what bullies do. That's not what allies do. And so you're starting to see some real fracturing occurring in Europe right now around this Nord Stream pipeline. I Just watching it unfolding in Germany right now, and you're seeing calls for major investigations inside of Germany about this. Wow, finally. What do we know? Why, why was the United States allowed to... Who in Germany knew about this, by the way? Who went along with this in Germany? Were it, was it green eco-terrorists? Who or you know, people who were uh, actively involved in this with the United States? Did they know about this? Or was it just the United States working alone or working with Norway on this, as Seymour Hersh reports? Well, you know, and that's why, that's why it's so important to share videos like this, because... It is independent journalism now that is bringing this stuff to light because we can't count on the mainstream anymore. And no. the only reason a lot of people know about this is because of independent journalists like Seymour, like this channel. So like that's why it's so important that you guys share these videos because the, the information is getting out and, and it is being heard because big yeah. you know big uh, channels and stuff watch this or promote it. So it's like it's important that if you can't support in other ways, sharing it is very important. Right, because now we're starting to see some moves because, and politicians are starting to talk openly about this in a way that they have been quiet for months on this. So thanks to Seymour Hersh's reporting and thanks to all of you for sharing this story and drawing awareness to it, pushing out information, sharing articles about Nord Stream, to me is the biggest story in a decade. I mean, since 9-11. And it's been swept under the rug by the mainstream media. So now you're starting to see the rumblings from members of Congress calling for impeachment and talking openly about this being an impeachable offense for President Biden. Going around Congress to carry out a war crime, a terrorist attack on the infrastructure, the energy infrastructure of Europe without congressional approval. For what? We're not in a war with Russia. What did you do? You literally attacked a pipeline that's owned, by the way, over uh, less than 49% uh, of it is owned by Western European countries, European and with our military, companies. And with our military elite. I mean, that's like, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're making our military complicit now. Right. You're using taxpayer dollars in the military to go carry out a terrorist attack. The very thing we, we stood against after 9-11, right? It's the idea. We stand against these types of things. So Senator Mike Lee says this likely rises to the level of an impeachable offense. Listen. The answer to this question, if it turns out that the United States was responsible, has very dire consequences. And, and I don't, I'm not even talking yet about what happens within our government, what the consequences there might be. Uh, but I is, just this, mean, is this rise to stage. does this rise to more than an impeachable offense? Uh, quite possibly, yes. I, I, I believe it does. Because if you go to such great lengths to engage in, in an attack, a, a provocative, offensive attack on a near-peer, nuclear-armed, geopolitical adversary, and you do so uh, in a manner that violates our Constitution, because that's as I see it anyway. It seems to me like an act of war. Yeah. Last I checked, it... Uh, war can't be just declared, just decided by a president. And right. sure, I, I know clandestine operations happen. Discrete military strikes are something different yeah. than something provocative on this scale that right. inevitably lead to and, in fact, are war. 
Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> Leading to World War III. So today, Russia calling for a UN emergency meeting and a full investigation. We'll see now what the United Nations does on this. Will they ignore it like the mainstream media has ignored it? And now the, the mainstream media is being forced to pay attention to it. And members of Congress are being approached and asked about this. And here's what you can do. Everyone, every one of you watching right now, you can send a letter to your member of Congress. You can go to their email. You can get on the phone. It takes two minutes. Get on the phone and call your representative's offices and say, we want answers about this Nord Stream pipeline explosion. And did the United States carry it? You need to push for a hearing on this because they can call for a hearing, a congressional hearing on this. And this would be, you know, move towards a level of moving towards impeachment proceedings on this. Not every member of Congress, though, is on board. Activists confronted yesterday New York Representative uh, Richie Torres saying Cy Hirsch just released the fact that the United States blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Uh, are you going to guys put together a hearing on this? You know, this is an important thing that the president carried out a terrorist attack. Are you guys going to call for a hearing? Here is his response. Cy Hirsch just released the fact that the United States blew up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. You weren't briefed on that. Why not? Are you going to put a congressional probe into that? Yes or no? Because um, this ain't no ordinary journalist. You know that. So... Oh, hold on. I want to hear what he has to say. Nord, Nord, Stream, Nord Stream is a pipeline that transfers oil from Europe, particularly Germany, I'm sorry, from Russia to Germany. So we don't have the authority to investigate pipelines. All right, come on. Now that's bullshit. You know that. Victoria Newland herself says she's happy that it's a pile of metal underwater. Do you share her sentiment? And it may be that. Here's what we know. The Europeans are conducting an investigation. They investigated. And it is true. Why did Joe Biden say that we are going to get rid of the Nord Stream pipeline? And when asked, but wait a minute, that's run by Gazprom in Germany. How are you going to do it? He said, we'll be able to do it. If you have definitive evidence. Yeah, we do. It's called Cy Hirsch. Then produce the evidence. Oh, he already, he already produced the evidence. Already has Read the article. Listen, this is, this is Cy Hirsch. This is the My Lai Massacre. Okay, this is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. He is not going to publish something he can't prove. So unless you're naive enough and you don't know that, I'm here to inform you. I'm at least asking for congressional inquiry into whether or not it's true, because his credibility alone should prompt that. Don't yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Wouldn't you think that, that gave me goosebumps? It really did. Like here he is, and, and what was amazing is actually to hear all those voters in that room sitting there saying, no, no, Europe has already conducted an investigation. Like they already have the answers. Like Sweden already did. Because yeah, generally, they know who did it. Look how many times we've seen somebody like that standing up and then everybody's like, shut up, shut up. And then they get dragged out. Right, right, right. This was like, they all were informed. And they were like clapping. They're like, yeah. And they, they knew about it. They knew about it. They knew who Cy Hirsch is. They know what the evidence is in the, his report. Um, and by the way, it should be verifiable. You can literally go through the facts that he lays out and confirm or deny each of the items in there. Oh, Navy divers being trained at this facility. Which Navy divers were involved in this? We should be able to find out specifically through a congressional hearing who was involved in this. All of it. And so, you know, again, this is to me, this is one of the worst mistakes in U.S. history. I think this is one of the biggest political blunders of all time to do something like this. And now you're going to see you're, you basically killed NATO, your friends, your allies, and you're pushing us to the brink of nuclear war, perhaps. Um, and, you know, and we don't have we don't have any kind of a congressional hearing yet. So I'm hoping, guys, just please, you know, send a letter, get on the phone, just send a simple email to your representative. It's easy to find your district. Go online if you live in the United States and send it. And if you live in Europe and other places, call for an investigation in Europe. Call for hearings, public hearings. Like we cannot allow this kind of stuff to stand. This deep state that gets away with this stuff and thinks that we, because if they get away with this, think what else they can get away with. Like we have to draw a line in the sand somewhere. So that's what I'll say on that. Well, and, and just one more thing, like it, it's, it's one thing to get by with this stuff using secret military like we do so many times, but we used our, 
our military. And that makes it a, I mean, that's a provocation of war. Right. The secret things you, are as well, but we can argue that's outside of the purview, right? This was an order that had to come down from a general, a like so, it had to go down a chain of command to our military. Yeah, yeah. Our commander in chief had to sign off on this in order to use the U.S. Navy. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.